Hi everybody, so College Board just released some big news regarding the SAT. So for those of you who don't know me, my name is Joey and I'm the Perfect Score Tutor. I've been coaching the SAT and the ACT for the past 15 years. I've gotten perfect scores on the SAT and ACT myself and I've coached seven students into perfect scores as well. So College Board has just made some announcements about the SAT and here are five things you need to know about the new digital SAT. Number one, no more paper tests. So that's kind of obvious from the name digital SAT, right? So basically what College Board has done is they decided to scrap the paper tests and put every single test on the computer. So when is this going to affect you? So for students in the class of 2025, so those would be freshmen at the time of this recording, they would be taking the PSAT digitally in the fall of 2023. For students in the class of 2025, they actually will still have the option. So if you want to take the SAT earlier, in the fall of your junior year, let's say, you could still take it on paper. However, if you want to take it in the spring of your junior year, you're going to have to take the exam digitally. Everybody in the class of 23 and 24, they're not going to have to worry about this new test. And everybody in the class of 2026 20, and beyond will have to take the digital exam. So where are they going to get all the computers to administer this exam? So every student's going to have to bring their own laptop or computer into the school testing site and you will be proctored by an actual live person. I guess College Board is trying to thwart cheating by not letting students take exams at home because everybody knows how the digital AP exams went. So what's unclear is what kind of technology or what kind of software they're gonna have students use, but it sounds like they're gonna have students bring their own devices to the testing center so they don't have to invest a ton of money into infrastructure. Yay. Number two. This test is gonna be an adaptive test. So what does that mean? So in the past, the SAT had one booklet. So they'd make a million copies of this booklet and they'd send this booklet in these like sealed containers to schools around the country and around the world. Of course, with safety issues, sometimes these tests got leaked. Sometimes tests would be canceled the day of. There was all these nightmares because they literally only had one test that millions of students would take. So now with this adaptive test, students are gonna each get their own set of questions. If you do really well on a question, then the SAT will amp up the level of difficulty. If you miss a question, then the test might scale down and give you an easier question. So I've been on a bunch of forums and a bunch of people are complaining about, oh my God, this is a new test and how is this gonna work? But realistically, there's a GRE and the GMAT, which are computer adaptive tests, and they've been around for a long time, so this new SAT is going to be kind of similar in my opinion to those. Number three, this new test is going to be shorter. So for those of you who are studying for the SAT right now, you all know that it's a three hour and 15 minute test, and of course, if you have a really slow proctor, who forces you to fill out all the bubbles all in tandem, then the test can take as long as five or even six hours. I'm not even joking. One time I took the SAT and I didn't leave till six hours later because it was taking so long to fill out the bubbles. But anyways, with this new test, it's supposed to be a two hour test because with the adaptive testing, then it can kind of figure out your level and give you questions that are catered to your level. So what College Board is saying is that with this shorter test, they're also gonna give you a little bit more time per question. So it's not gonna be this like time crunch. There will be fewer questions, but the quality of the questions relevant to your level will be higher. Number four, they're going back to the old SAT and allowing calculators for the entire test. I guess this whole thing with not allowing calculators was kind of a failed experiment on their part. I don't know. But what I think is really cool is within the test, they're saying they're going to embed a graphing calculator into the test. I really love Desmos as a graphing calculator software, and apparently they're partnering with Desmos so that you can plug in numbers into their calculator for the test. I think from an equity and access perspective, this is a really great idea because some students have those fancy calculators that can like solve formulas and like do jumping jacks and like pay your rent for you. But with this new added calculated feature, everybody's kind of more on a level playing field because they'll all have the same technology to work with. Number five, you're gonna get your results right away. With this digital test, it shouldn't take more than a day or two to score. And when I took the GRE, I actually got an estimate of my score as soon as I clicked the submit button. And then a week later or so, I got the official test result. 
So that's what I'm assuming is going to happen with the SAT. Now in the past, it theoretically took three weeks for the scores to release, but you know, sometimes there's discrepancies, or maybe students would be accused of cheating because their scores were too similar to somebody who sat next to them. So a score could sometimes take eight weeks, or I've even heard of scores taking like months and months for some unknown reason. Maybe it got lost in the mail. Maybe it got rained on. I don't know. But with this computer adaptive testing, you're going to get really, really quick results, hopefully. So it's all still really fresh news, so there's not a lot of stuff that I can definitively say. But College Board has tried to release as much information as possible. So I'm curious to see how much of this will be true in two years when the first official exam is released. So here's a couple of frequently asked questions. Will the paper version be available alongside the digital version? No. So this is kind of like what happened in 2004 when they switched. So there's literally one test day where they did the old test and then the following they completely shifted to the new test. So that's what's going to happen here. There's going to be the one final administration on paper and then surprise everybody's going to be taking the test on a computer. How are students going to take this new SAT? So according to College Board, students will be taking it on some sort of laptop or tablet and they're going to have to download some sort of app onto their computer. So I think from an accessibility issue, I'm thinking schools are going to chip in with computers, maybe letting students use their computer lab. So for students who don't have access to a device, there's still ways of them taking this exam. How are students going to practice for this new exam? Well, in the past, there's been Khan Academy, so they are still going to partner with College Board to release new material. And I'm sure there's going to be a lot of third-party people who will be converting old tests into digital versions of this test. So what happens if your device conks out the day of for whatever reason? Maybe there's an internet issue, or maybe your computer restarts for whatever reason? Well, according to College Board, they're going to have customer support ready for people who are struggling with those issues. And we know how good College Board support is these days. Apparently though, if your like, computer restarts, you can kind of pick off where you left off. And same if your wireless disconnects. And I guess that's kind of an okay thing, especially if they have a on-site proctor for you. Will the SAT scores be on a 1600 scale? Yes, so they're not changing the scoring, so we'll have that same old number to rely on. So that shouldn't affect students who take either test or both tests. A 1500 theoretically should be the same on the paper version as it is on the digital version. Will this new test be different? So I found this really interesting. According to College Board, they're saying they're going to take a lot of the math word questions, which are really, really long right now, and they're going to condense them into shorter word problems. That part I find a little bit confusing because I thought that the word problems they had, even though they were a little bit long, they were kind of relevant to real life. They also said they're going to take a lot of the reading passages and shorten them. So instead of reading long passages and answering 9, 10, or 11 questions, now they're going to give shorter reading passages and asking just one question. For those of you who are curious, I think the shorter reading passages might be similar to the 2004 SAT or the pre-2004 SAT. They gave really short passages and asked just one or two questions. Why is College Board making the change? Well, according to College Board, they're making these changes to adapt to the digital age that is affecting them right now. I guess that kind of makes sense with everything that happened in 2020 and 2021 with the AP exams going online. In my opinion, I think they are trying to gain back some market share because people have been really, really frustrated with how bad they've messed everything up the past two years. So hopefully, this sort of PR stunt will allow them to get back in people's graces. So then, where does the ACT fall? Well, so far nothing's been said from the ACT. It looks like it's going to be continued to be offered on paper. Now, please note that if you're an international student, you've been taking the ACT online. So there's nothing that says that the ACT can't switch their format either. I think it's going to be an interesting game to see over the next couple years. So what's my advice for people? My final advice is if you're a sophomore in the class of 2024 or a junior in the class of 2023, you don't need to do anything different. Pretend like life is as normal as you can possibly have it be. 
if you're a freshman in the class of 2025 and you are going to be a little bit accelerated and taking advanced classes in your sophomore and junior year, you may want to take the paper test still. If you're somebody who needs a little bit more time to prep or plan to take it in the middle of your junior year or even take the SAT in your senior year, then you will be planning for the digital test. For those of you who still really want a paper test, the ACT still exists. And I think it does benefit a certain type of student who can crank through a lot of questions really quickly. If you have any specific questions that you want me to try to research or answer, please leave a comment below. Thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you found this content helpful.